You're listening to Puma Podcast. Hi, I'm Franco Luna Puma Podcast and you're listening to Teka Teka News. In this episode, probably you've heard that my Jollibee na that municipality is about to become a city or going to apply for conversion, right? Or pag may SM na definitely that's already a a city, right? Maybe these are proxy indications for urbanization, which I think uh, also speaks to the weakness of the criteria. Ano ba talaga ang sukatan ng pagiging city? Urbanization, di ba? Urbanization. San Jose del Monte City just voted against converting itself from a component city into a highly urbanized city. Let's ask the question, why wouldn't residents want the upgrade in official status? Mamaya pag-usapan din natin kung ano ang difference ng component city sa highly urbanized city. Yun, preference, no? magiging investment destination na talaga tayo. Hindi lang yung mga local investors. no? They take preference. Preferential treatment of highly urbanized cities. Ngayon pa nga lang, component city na, na. We have already experienced this kind of investment boom. Big players are here already. Real estate dito, Ayala. Map. Andito na yung uh, Santa Lucia, SM, Star Mall is here. You just heard Dr. Dennis Booth. He's city administrator for San Jose del Monte in Bulacan. And he was talking about why city officials were supportive of converting SJDM from a component city to a highly urbanized city. Former President Rodrigo Duterte's proclamation declared San Jose del Monte as having met the requirements of an HUC, but Bulacan residents needed to greenlight the conversion through a plebiscite. Now, San Jose del Monte has a population of around 650,000, That's more than three times the 200,000 required by the local government code. Their net income is also around 141 million pesos, almost thrice the 50 million pesos annual income required for HUCs. They also have a train line to Manila opening in the coming years. The point is the conditions are ripe for a bump up. San Jose del Monte, part of Central Luzon, mas magandang mamuhunan. Kasi mababa ang labor cost. Kasi regional wage tayo, na region 3 ang ating rate, hindi ka, compared to sa, sa NCR na medyo mas mataas. So, we expect uh, investors boom. But during the plebiscite conducted alongside the 2023 Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections, at least 820,000 voters out of 1.6 million were against the conversion, while just 620,000 voted yes. San Jose del Monte City has a population of close to 652,000. That's around one-fifth of the entire population of Bulacan Province. Many residents work in Metro Manila because despite being a city, SJDM's wages remain provincial. Students receive scholarships from the Bulacan Province and residents rely on free medical services in Malolos. So why were the residents against being classified an HUC? Number one is their taxes will increase. Even if the city of SJDM will have its funds without going through Bulacan, for them higher taxes only burdens ordinary citizens and small businesses, a seventh of whom do their business in the national capital region anyway. At the same time, they would be economically dislocated from Bulacan when New Manila International Airport in Bulacan Town opens in a few years. What's more, there were also fears that scholarship support for students from Bulacan will be cut because the city, as an HUC, won't fall under the province's administration. So they asked where will former scholars turn for support? Medical aid from Bulacan for sick residents will also be cut. This while the city lacks a complete and suitable public hospital as most hospitals are private. They say the health situation of the poor will worsen. Well, you may mga requirements in terms of uh, income and land area or population. But uh, basic yung income. Uh, hindi pwedeng marami lang kami. You know, it's not it cannot be just the population. So kailangan you have to show naman that you're viable. That's Professor Dan Gatmaitan of the UP College of Law in a recent live stream with Teka Teka News. He teaches constitutional law, legal method, and local government law. San Jose del Monte has actually been a first-class component city since the year 2000 until Duterte proclaimed it an HUC three years ago. 
see independent component cities are cities outside of provincial jurisdiction that have not yet attained the highly urbanized status, while component cities are those under a province's jurisdiction. Ano ba yung motivation? Uh, it's the ano, di ba? It's a larger piece of the era. That's one mm. one thing talaga that you can see. Kaya sila nag nakikipag ano yun, naunahan para maging city because mali yung formula in the sense that um, a bulk of the funds actually go to cities kahit na iilan lang sila. Uh, uh, in 1991, and since then, there's a you know it's a meteoric rise in number of cities because they all wanted the larger share. Lianes Capanti, who has been a resident of SJDM since birth, says she voted for her city to be classified as an HUC. Sabi niya, ang pressure para mag-upgrade ang SJDM ay malaki dahil marami ang informal settlers na galing sa Metro Manila noong 1990s. Oo, sabi niya, mas tataas ang taxes pero mas dadami din ang serbisyo at tataas ang value ng property mo. So bakit parang lahat dalang gustong maging city? Carmona just won its cityhood, while Pateros is still trying to claim the Fort Bonifacio area in a bid to prepare itself for cityhood. That would be the first motivation, the, the, the access to the funding. And then you would also have a greater fiscal or financial autonomy because functionally, and the local government code does not make any distinctions. Yan naman si Rafael Montes. He teaches at the University of the Philippines Center for Local and Regional Government. We spoke to him shortly after Carmona became a city to ask why these labels, city, municipality, component, urbanized, matter. Whether you're an HUC or you're an uh, independent component city or you're a component city, uh, you, for as long as you're a city, you can exercise the powers of both the municipality and the province. So for example, municipalities are in charge of primary health care. So yan lang yung rural health unit that would be... The, the highest sort of health care that, you, that uh, a municipality could, could provide under the law is a lying in clinic. We're pausing for a quick break now. When we return, we'll tell you about what this means or should mean for all of us outside of Bulacan. The people of San Jose del Monte Bulacan was privileged enough to know how the price visit works. And they they know how to campaign properly. They know how to do it properly. In terms of governance, we've seen participatory governance, an example on what happened. This is what we are as a democracy should be. So in terms of governance, it went through the process. Eh. Napasa ng mga legislators or HUC. Ang hinihiling naman nila, umo o yung taong bayan. Nung humindi yung taong bayan, naging, hindi man naging issue ito, pero naging concern ito sa mga legislators. That's Rans Calderon. He is Executive Director of GoodGovPH, a youth-led nonprofit organization that advocates for good governance. Right now, it's just the fact that many residents are struggling financially in San Jose del Monte. Despite appearances of progress, a significant portion of the population remains impoverished. And they hit the nail on the head when they asked, Will progress and better services come with the graduation to highly urbanized cityhood? Because there's also a reason why the One Bulacan Movement, led by Governor Daniel Fernando, preached the unity of the Bulacanio. The thing with, with component cities is that unless the city charter specifies that they are an independent component city, people in the component city can still vote for provincial officials. And, and people in that component city can still run for Uh, higher positions like board member, vice governor, or governor if, if uh, they intend to do that. For uh, HUCs and ICCs, they, they can't do that because they don't no longer vote for their provincial officials. So Cebu City, for example, um, they only vote for their city officials. They no longer vote for, for their officials of the Cebu province. Sa tingin ni Lianesca, residente ng SJDM for 37 years, dalawang rason bakit hindi nanalo ang binoto niya. Number one, ang lakas ng pushback ng provincial government. We'll talk about the stake of the provincial government later. And number two, sabay sa barangay and SK elections. At dahil dito, dalawa ang balota. Kaya nalito rin ang mga botante. Rands has a different view. Despite how you might feel about the issue, he says, the way these messages were organized and communicated is a win for civic participation. 
And that might be the one thing we're all missing in the issue. So there are a lot of things happening beyond elections. We've just went past through Barangay and SK elections recently. And halos kasabay ito ng Barangay and SK elections yung nangyari sa Bulacan. So ganun sana yung appreciation natin as citizens. That in terms of governance, there is participatory democracy in in a sense na nag-no yung tao eh. Sabi ng tao, no. So hindi mo papasa yung batas, no? The Note to HUC movement's website also cited fears like increased deforestation and the conversion of agricultural land into commercial areas. And with increased city taxes, the cost of living will rise among privatized services. Rand says there is something to be said about not just the understanding of, but the engagement with the issues that affect the regular folks like you and me. Simply messaging nila for all listening, if you seen the website if you read it it's in filipino it was written in a way na bulakenos can understand it it was written in a way na may facts doon and it is written just seven points may seven point agenda ka sinabi nila yung call to action nila na by october 30 ganito yung magiging boto natin bakit sinabi nila yung seven points nila The fact that these issues were the seven points also points to a lot of underlying issues that the local government probably should be thinking about before they think of attracting investors via urbanization. Because at the end of the day, it's the people of San Jose del Monte who decided on the future of San Jose del Monte. Here's Lance Calderon of GoodGovPH again. We should all learn from this in terms of what will happen most likely by next year, which we will file again Certificate of Candidacies by end of October. And come, come 2025, that's a midterm elections. It, it's not a long way from there. So, maliit lang yung nangyari sa San Jose del Monte Bulacan. Hindi siya microcosm of what's happening in the society. It's an isolated case that we should all learn from. The same thing... Now, there are LGUs that is performing well because of good governance. It's not the same at all on a national scale. However, what we can learn from this is makikita natin na kaya pala natin, na may sense pa rin pala yung democratic practice natin dito sa Pinas. And that was today's episode of Teka Teka News. Again, I'm Franco Luna. This episode was edited by Pidoy Blanco. Our Teka Teka News executive producer is Jill Caro, and our senior editor is Veronica Uy. If you found this episode useful, share it with a friend. Help Teka Teka News reach more people and keep the show going. Thanks for listening. <laughs>